following the events in the Prada Cup in Auckland last Sunday. Drama. This week we have a special in-depth look at what occurred. Great racing, some surprise results, and it ended with American Magic fighting to save their boat, Patriot. Here's how it all unfolded. American Magic against Luna Rossa of Italy in the final race of the day. The Americans, with no victories yet in the Prada Cup, desperate to get a win before the weekend racing was over. By gate five, the Americans were in command, and that's when disaster struck. A big gust after a difficult mark rounding, and there was no way back for helmsman Dean Barker and his boat. This is the Sailing World on Water, January 22, 2021. To analyze the capsize of the New York Yacht Club's American Magic Yacht Patriot, we have the chairman, Tom Amon, and Olympic silver medalist Luca Devoti. They shine a blinding light on what happened rounding that fifth mark. You won't hear this elsewhere. Brutal, honest and true. Luca Devoti is an Italian competitive sailor and Olympic medalist. He won a silver medal in the Finn class at the 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney. He is also builder of Devoti Snipes. He was involved with Plus 39 Challenge in the 2007 Louis Vuitton Cup. Tom Amon conducts every Tuesday and Friday, the highly informed live sailing show, Sailing Illustrated. This time three years ago the Sun Hung Kai Scallywag team crossed the finish line of the Volvo Ocean Race winning Leg 4, Melbourne to Hong Kong, a 5,600 nautical mile journey that took them 17 days, 14 hours and 30 minutes. The U.S. Sailing, U.S. Open Sailing Regatta is on in Florida. Now over to Tom and Luca in Tuesday show. Everything. Drama. Great racing. Some surprise results. And it ended with American Magic fighting to save their boat, Patriot. Here's how it all unfolded. American Magic against Luna Rossa of Italy in the final race of the day. The Americans, with no victories yet in the Prada Cup, desperate to get a win before the weekend racing was over. By gate five, the Americans were in command, and that's when disaster struck. A big gust after a difficult mark rounding, and there was no way back for helmsman Dean Barker and his boat. We'd seen capsizes before, but this one was different. Patriot was righted, but there was something very wrong. She appeared to be sinking. Well, this is a well-rehearsed operation, and we've seen it done a few times for real. And here comes Patriot is back up. Oh, look at the bow, though. Something's not right. That's semi-submerged there. The crew know it. They're going to have a look. Well, now it's all about keeping the boat afloat. They're going to try and inflate some, some floats under the bow to keep it up. I'll, I'll stop it here and point out that they're actually... And you'll hear Terry talk about in the press conference, they're taking a jib and trying to wrap it around the hull to plug the hole. So that was kind of a cool move. Here, we'll carry on. Pumping the water off the boat to give them time to inflate the supports. Some of the other teams have come in to help now. The Emirates team, New Zealand uh, support boat is there. The American Magic crew trying to do their best. There's Peter Burling, winner of the last cup, cutting something away, helping the opponents. Real America's Cup community feel and spirit here. Not something we would be used to talking about in past years. Local Coast Guard helping out with their pumps. A 
Looks like the boat's stabilised now. Helmsman Dean Barker giving some instructions. The Luna Rossa crew helping out as well there. That's Shannon Falcone from Luna Rossa from Antigua. There's only three of them already. Looks like things have been stabilised on the waters off Auckland here. The boat is safe. But how much work are they going to have to do to get it ready for the next round robins? That is the big question. Those begin next Friday. They have four days of very hard work ahead of them. <laughs> it's so sad. There's a big debate going on here now, Luca, about this whole bear away. And let's, we'll get into that in a second after Kenny Reed. I'm going to show the Kenny Reed video of him describing the mainsail being impeded, uh, hanging up on the running back stay. And then we'll talk about Paul Goodison, about Goody saying probably smarter to go straight than to tack. But these are the images you all saw that we've seen in the videos and some fat, you know, these great ph yachting photographers. And we'll be seeing these for many, many years, I'm sure. There was also some question about whether the boat would actually sink, giving all the natural buoyancy in the hull when it fills up with water. So I'm, it, I, I've heard Terry and a couple of other naval architects, uh, not not in the well, not directly to me, not Terry didn't, but uh, he said something in the press conference that maybe the hull wouldn't have sunk anyway. They were all worried about it sinking, and I've talked to a couple of naval architects that Luca that the the structure there was enough structure there. In the in the natural buoyancy in the hull, that the boat probably was not going to sink in that what twelve to thirteen meters of water. Have you heard anything or any insights on all that? Well, possibly, but here the problem is sinking or not sinking is 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 the damage to all the components of the boat, and and these boats are extremely complicated. So, without the electronics working perfectly, without the hydraulics working perfectly, without they 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 are impossible to sail. So that's where the challenge is, and. Uh, Mm. Yeah, and you feel for them when you see these pictures. It's 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 really, it's really devastating, you know, exactly. being in a team and 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 doing a mistake like that and and, and having the boat destroyed. It it must be terrible. Well, and as the at the end of that press release, the, the the ACE announcer said, "Well, they got a lot of work to be ready for this coming Friday for this the round robin three and four. That ain't happening." They're they're Terry said in the press conference on uh, his Monday, our Sunday, it's that, that we covered live. And thanks, Talbot, for your comment, because we have been live, we've been live streaming all this stuff as watch parties, the racing and the press conference, because we're never sure if it's going to be geo-blocked here in the U.S. or elsewhere. But they're not, they've, they're not even trying to be ready this coming weekend. It's the question now is whether they can be ready the following weekend for the start of the so-called semifinals. Some more pictures here. This is the ETNZ guys with Pete Burling and others rushing out there to help. And their, uh, Dick Meacham, their head of the short team or the boat build team was out also. And of course, Terry knows these guys because Terry was the, the tactician for the Team New Zealand 2007 campaign, Luca, in Valencia when you were heading up plus 39. And that was a good campaign, wasn't it? But, oh, yeah. They, they, they didn't did beat Alinghi, but almost. Oh, he, he did a fabulous job, uh... Uh, as a tactician in that cup, uh, there was one race where they possibly lost it um, in the finals, and there they might have made a few mistakes, but uh, but they sailed nearly flawless most of the time. So, so you know, 2007, they did a great job, but it's already 14 years ago. So we've got Ken Reed and Nathan Otteridge describing the backstay issue, which we want to dissect a little bit and then we want to talk about the call on whether they should have done this tack bear away or whether they should have continued to the far mark we'll talk about that in a sec this is how it unfolded okay so i started seeing the bottom of the jib flapping there and all of a sudden you see a little foam on the water a little spray coming off the water it's like oh boy this looks really windy right now all of a sudden and see that spray blowing away really hard really fast but Nathan's exact. Look at everything's luffing. Everything's flooded. Oh, the lured running Lord backstay. Is still on. The lured running backstay stays on, and it's hooked up against the mainsail. They can't let that mainsail out. The lured runner is still tight. The lured runner never got released. The lured runner is the thing that keeps the uh, the rig in check, and the 
thing we keep talking about. Luna Ross, I want to get rid of them. You see the main looks like it's pinned on, so let's hard up against that lured runner. Wow. The lured runner looks like it didn't release, and oh my god, the boat turns sideways. So, so essentially, an inability to release pressure on the mainsail and say, "Pop, you're over." Sure is what it looked like to me. Nathan and I both picked it up. The mainsail was kind of pinned, a big curvature right around that shroud that goes towards the top of the mast. So the last thing we want to see is the boat capsizing, but the most important thing is that all crew were safe and well. And now it's all about recovering the asset and getting ready for next week. What a way to finish. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli have picked up a second point on the back of American Magic's capsize, still searching for their first win. So disaster for American Magic. They hand what was looking to be a certain win to Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, just when you thought you'd seen it all. The teams will now take a well-earned rest, but the flying monohulls will be back in action in a couple of days. The race for the Prada Cup is far from over. Okay, Luca. So as Andrew McIrvin and others are saying, it will be the electronics and hydraulics that will kill them. And Terry said as much in the press conference the other day. He said, look, our electronics are fried. First of all, we have to take the FCS, the foil control system, off of their B1 Defiant, which is there at their base in Auckland, the, the, the boat that was shipped down by ship when they flew their B2, their race boat down. They now got to take the foil control system, can't system off the boat, one, and put it under boat two. But one hears that they've got a problem, and Terry thought that their hydraulics were in good shape, He's, or so he said at the press conference. One hears their hydro hydraulics are not in good shape. What are you hearing? What do you think? Well, I'm not sure it was uh, it was the runner that made them capsize. I think uh, uh, when you look uh, when you look when they bear away, the mainsail is completely out. Um, I think uh, I think it was an unfortunate decision to to tack and jibe in a gust like that. And uh, and um, yeah. Yeah, this is what led to this disastrous consequence. I mean, maybe the runner was already uh, released as much as he could. That's what Terry said in the press conference, um, because everything is trimmed to a certain length. I think really the mistake was to do the maneuver there, that maneuver there with a gust. And I'd like to make it much more, a much more uh, uh, global, um, global uh, consideration, you know? So, so, uh, who has really impressed in this uh, first regardless is uh, is Ineos Team UK. And uh, these boats, well, they have uh, they have uh, batteries to move the foil arms, but everything else has to be moved by grinders. And uh, they have done such a fabulous job in redesigning the grinding system and having the grinders diagonally and, and the way they make the effort, that they have much more power. So they can have more people um, looking at the tactics, looking at the flight control, and um, and therefore they look slicker in the maneuvers. So, so I think it'd be interesting to see these pictures of all the boats, how they are set up, and how people are actually working on board, and uh, and, and understand what leads to this um, to this accident. Um, um, you, you could say there is an element of luck, but. Um, sailors, um, sailors see the gusts coming and uh, and have to take the right decision. So I think it's a bit being overwhelmed by the boat um, because of the systems you have, because of uh, possibly the age of the crew, because of a lot of things together that that lead to this. And unfortunately, you know, it ended up with with such a destruction. You know? Okay. Well, you you've seen the video. You, I don't have it here. The video and the audio from the back off the back end of the boat. It's I put it on my Facebook page. It's been widely played. You can hear Paul Goodison, whom you know well, Olympic gold medalist in Rio in the Finn class. And, no, no, in the laser. He was a gold medalist in the laser. Paul oh, in the Goodison. laser, sorry. And you've got Ben, who is a five-time medalist, four-time gold medalist in your class, in the Finn class. And he's, he, they are 
these guys are brilliant sailors and you got Goody who's talking to, in this case, Dean Barker. And he's when they're in the last less than a minute going and they're going 40 knots. I mean, they're closing into the top gate and the call is that the breeze, a little light on the left or sorry, on the, on the, on the downwind left on the upwind, right. So we don't want to go just do a bear away and go around the right end. We want to do attack bear away around the upwind left end of the gate. And you hear this plainly on the dialogue. Terry, meanwhile, is grinding. He's got his head down and his butt up, his ass up in the air. And he's 50, whatever he is, three years old. And, you know, if, I'm not, I can't imagine grinding for, for, you know, a couple minutes, let alone for five legs. At, at any yeah, age. And, then, and, and then, the, sorry, the call comes. Uh, we're going to stand by, copy, stand by from Dino, and they're going to attack because they've made that decision. They're worried about the pressure. They're about, they've are about got the adrenaline running, of course, of naturally from the race, but it looks like they're finally going to win a race. And as Terry explained at the press conference, we didn't want to risk going over to the light air. And the call was that it was light over on the upwind right, downwind left. So we're going to tack jibe around the left end of the gate. What you, what do you think? Well, as I say, you know, um, here the problem is of how much you see of the race course. So um, they have this, uh, this, um, this, this, these lenses in front where they surely get data and so on and so forth. So they get focused on all the data they get in these classes, and they they lose the peripheral vision. They don't see the gas coming. And this is, you know, in the press conference, he says, you know, the wind went on the instruments from 18 to 23 knots in uh, three seconds. Well, but you do see that if you look at the, on the water. And, and this has got to do with, with the distribution of the crew on board, with, the, with what they do, with the fact that you're grinding, uh, with, with age, with reactivity. And so they just take the wrong decision. And, and uh, that takes nothing away from them being fabulous sailors. But... But you know, to race like Charles Scott and Ben are doing, you got to look around, and and when you hear their comms, you know, uh, they they uh, pressure, more pressure here, more pressure there, shift. They see the race course, okay? They got their data, but but they see what's going on, and here this is the problem, and and you have to see it and take the decision accordingly, which is what uh, what Goodison suggests, and uh, and well, uh, they didn't they didn't decide like that because actually in that situation to have less wind on the other mark was only a bonus because you'd go around it and then jibe and uh, get ready for the gust to come when you are when you're really sailing at full speed. You know, the AC-75 is a fabulous concept, but it's it's a concept that has an unstable equilibrium. So all the strengths have to be balanced and the boat has to go full blast so that you're actually able to have it stable. If, if anything goes out of sync, and this unstable equilibrium isn't there anymore, you know, immediately mm -hmm. disaster strikes. Now here they got this gust, 23 knots, which is which is a lot for these boats, but in reality it's not very much. And 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 then and then all these happened, you know. It might be that that they could have had a bit more panel strength. Uh, it might be that they could have dimensioned the entire part to withstand such kind of crash, but I think it is difficult to imagine that you do. A flight like that, and we have to remember the boat with the crew must be around twenty thousand pounds, or or nine thousand kilos, or eight thousand five hundred. So when they fall down, I mean it's a big, big smash. So so it is, um, yeah, it is, it is unfortunate. And uh, uh, and um, I would say I would say that you know the older the tactician is, the more we have to preserve him from effort so that he can maintain his peripheral vision and see the race course and see the gusts and. Uh, and uh, and be sharp to take the decision, and um, and uh, and so I think that also the crew distribution on board and what they do and and the fact that to get the part to run the boat they need so many people on the handles is actually that has led to this uh, to this chain of decisions and uh, yeah it's unexpected but then again that race course is like that you know the wind blows over the hill it comes down you get a gust and and so it's. Yeah, it's very tough, and uh, though we, to be quite honest, uh, you know, even Berlinger uh, uh, going straight had a capsize, uh, not so so catastrophic because he was going at full speed, so it, it didn't 
he didn't really end up with the forces like that and and, and, and so on and so forth. But, yeah, no, exactly. But yeah. these boats are limit. I mean, these boats are limit, and uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, this this special this this very special crash can have an incredible impact on their effort, and I feel very sorry for them. See the full video at www.facebook.com slash sailing illustrated or the link on our website www.boatson.tv A fantastic result, a real rags to riches story. And they have come into this race to put Hong Kong offshore sailing on the map. They are doing just that, but also to do that host city crowd. And right now there is absolutely cause for celebration. This is a win, and not just a win, but this is a, a glorious victory. And you can talk about the miles involved. today which uh, clinched the win for the radios in this event. It's awesome. I mean this has probably got to be one of the most competitive events of the year. Uh, you know and I'm sailing against some of my heroes as well. So it feels amazing and I had so much fun. This regard has been on my mind for the last nine months and then going forward the, the next major goal would be to win the Youth World Championship this year. I let my instincts take over a lot today. Um, and I was just sort of reacting to things with, with good boat handling and uh, it worked out. I want to thank you know my coaches and my parents and my home yacht club and everybody I train with. So, uh, the race committee did a great job too. This was a really well run event. So um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so uh, it was really hard racing. It was super shifty. Um, we had all sorts of wind uh, speeds. It was, uh, it was challenging and it was hard to stay consistent, but that was definitely the name of the game and just trying to be in the top top three every race. It was mostly just all about being on the lift attack, going towards the pressure, and sometimes that didn't work, and sometimes it did, so uh, you gotta take your luck when you can get it and be, uh, be okay when it goes bad. Happy to finish the way I did. It was pretty awesome racing against some people that I've watched on YouTube. And It was a really tough, tough weekend. I mean, the wind was pretty much all over the place, and it was basically whoever was just the most consistent with their starts and races was on top and uh, that just happened to be me. Oh my god, they're on an Olympic campaign and I'm just here like 14 years old against the Olympians and it's a bit nerve-wracking. Probably the best thing that I had going for me the entire regatta was uh, my boat handling and wanting it more than everybody else. Yeah, it feels really good to be the top female here and the youth league really was competitive at Lauderdale. Yeah. It's and they really pushed us and it was a big game of racing. Um, it's a really great stepping stone for Paris for Europe in the spring for the regattas that are going to be there. And ultimately it's a nice regatta to prepare for Tokyo.
See the full videos at www.facebook.com/worldonwater or our website www.boatson.tv.